just add, you know, uh, just asking certain questions. If you don't know the scripture or the Bible, can you say that you know your history? If the Bible is your history, but you don't know, all you know that Jesus died and he rose and you know about speaking in tongues, you know about healing, those things like that. But those things are not history. Those things are not history. And so it's very important that we understand our history. Sure. I'm assuming that uh, if we weren't able to be saw, then people would not be watching us. And I'm sure that my wife would have really gave the text by then, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yours still ain't pulling up? Yes, to me. Right. Okay. So, so yeah. let's get into our classes. Even so, the, the first part of history that I want to look at, uh, when you look at Genesis chapter, uh, we're not gonna, gonna turn that now. But in Genesis, Genesis lay down the generations. Okay. Genesis chapter ten, as I continue to tell my wife, is the most important chapter in the Bible. Now, that's other chapters, but I'm saying at this present time in my journey. Genesis chapter 10 is a chapter that's just overlooked uh, because it, we have some genealogy or so-and-so uh, uh, begot so-and-so, so-and-so begot so-and-so. But Genesis is very important because when you leave Genesis, when you leave out of Genesis, you already know who's who, okay? You already know who's who. Uh, we can see today that when you trace the people that are in charge of the world now, which is the uh, Europeans, you can trace that genealogy back to j -Fast. So it's very important. Uh, Russia, uh, Moscow, uh, uh, the Greeks, uh, China, okay, all these people come from j -Fast. And we have to understand that. You say, well, how, why, how, why is it important? Because you have to understand that Russia is still going to play a part in the end time prophecy. I can show you in Genesis chapter 10 where Mega and Masha, those, those are Russians, okay? Then Poland and so on, all these people come from j -Fat. And so they're going to be in the end time too. So we see that uh, that the Most High has declared to us in Isaiah, he tells us here, this is very important. I'm going to show you something here. Turn to Isaiah because I need to move on with because of uh, I know my clock is not, uh, or my computer ain't charged all the way, so I ain't got that much time around here. Uh, look what he says in Isaiah 40, 46, verses uh, uh, 9 and 10. 46, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Uh, Y'all need to understand that there's no, there, uh, 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 the writer of the Ruach Kadesh move holy man, to pen what he wants us to know. Uh, so there's no uh, story or events happen for no reason. They're just not there just to take up space, okay? As simple as it may seem or complex, it's there for a reason. So when something is complex and we don't understand it, well, Proverbs 25 verse 2 said, it, it is the glory of Elohim to conceal a matter that is a word, but it's the honor of kings to search it out. So that means that you got to apply yourself. you got to search this thing out. So now in Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10, watch this verse where he says. Go ahead, Ms. Jay. Remember the former things mm -hmm. of old, for I am Elohim, uh -huh. and there is none else. I am Elohim, and there is none like me. Now, he's going to tell you what set him apart from all these false deities that wants to be God and think they're God. But he said, I'm going to tell you what set me apart from Allah, uh, Christendom, and you name it. He's going to tell you right here what set him apart. Go ahead, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the what? The, the end, end from the beginning. And from ancient times. The things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So now he has already, what is he saying? He said, I already done told y'all what I'm going to do. do. I already done told y'all. Wow. He said, I already, 
Oh, you say, listen, he said, I know people say, well, well, well yeah, God knows the, the end from the beginning. Yes, yes, he does. But he's saying to us, I have declared the end. The end. Not in Revelation. Revelation is like the climax of everything. But he said, I already done told you what I'm going to do in the very beginning. That's why Genesis is very important that you understand Genesis. Genesis, uh, genes, genetic, the beginning of things. So Genesis is the beginning of life. So in Genesis, you will find out before, this is what we have to know, Charles. Before you got to get out of Genesis, you know who's the people. You know who Yah has chosen. You know your enemy. <laughs> huh? You know your oppressor. So that when I move into Exodus, the book of Exodus, then you start seeing names like the Jezusites and the Habites and the Hamorites. All these people come from Ham. When you read Genesis, watch we get to our study, as we study in the months to go, you'll find out later that Japheth or the Europeans, you don't hear about them for a while. For a while. See, you just read in your Bible. All the people that we dealt with was the Hamites, the, the dark-skinned Africans. You don't know that? Throughout our journey, that's what we kept, 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 kept to hell with. Was the Hamites, they are descendants. We're going to learn that. I want to teach this book as a history book so that when you open up, you'll know who's who. When the Europeans came on the scene, it was, it was when they started, is when Alexander the Great came out. That's when the Europeans started moving along. But until then, it was always black on black. We got it in the Bible, black on black crime. <laughs> I'm telling you, ain't nothing new, black on black crime. I'm trying to teach history. I want to teach history. I want us to know that this is a history book by a people called Israel who became a nation. And who God is the only God, the real God, the living God. And I'm saying, if hey, listen, if I can convince us, like, listen, if slavery, if the Most High allow our people to go in slavery, be beaten down, and then bring them out of slavery, would have delivered and made them a nation, can he do that with us? Hallelujah. The only difference is that they weren't spending years complaining about their slavery. Oh. <laughs> huh? See? Israel is the only people on the planet that their salvation, their prosperity, their deliverance, their wealth, their land, all come from Yah. And if we try to get it from man, we're in trouble. I tell people that we want, we want man to form a law to set people free. But Yah said, I gave y'all a law. I gave y'all a law. This is your freedom. Because if Sharp do it, then he gonna get the credit. If Jesse do it, he gonna get the credit. No, y'all gonna raise up as he did. He listen, just like Moses. Moses was born in an oppressor time, huh? Moses was born in slavery. I was delivered in the midst of slavery right now. In the oppressed of our land. But we got to look into the book and say, okay, if he did it for them and we the children, then we got to look into the book and say, okay, why? Because the recipe hasn't changed. So we look to the hill. See, all that old stuff would be called, look to the hill up there. Oh, stop lying. So if, if the Most High raised up a leader and you know the leader know what he's doing, then I will deliver, come through the leader that God is using. And so once you find a good leader, you surround yourself with the leader. Encourage the leader. Why? Keep him in prayer so he won't sell out like the other leaders. Yeah. I can't talk to them because they paying the bills. I don't care who paying the bills. Mm -hmm. Huh? Right. Now, so he has declared the end from the beginning, okay? Now, this is very important because I was going to go this way, but I, I, I'm going to try to move on because of my time here. So I want to look at Israel history. I just want to do a sketch. And then Genesis, we'll find out who the people, listen, why is it important, Pastor? Why is it important to know who the people is? Because that's over 300 prophecies leading to Israel. Probably more. 
that Yah is going to restore. I showed y'all many of right? Yah is going to restore the land back to the people. But the Bible said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I don't want that, uh, that old prophetic land over there. They've been trapping on it. He's going to give us a bride something new. Hallelujah. A new heaven and a new earth. So y'all can have that because he's going to take that away. Now, let's look at the first, the, the first history I want you to look at. This is called the Patriot period. Okay? The Patriot period, uh, 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 Charles. Now, the Patriot period started from Genesis chapter 12 to Genesis chapter 50. This is when Abraham comes on the scene. Okay? Now, remember, what lineage do Abraham come from? Talk to me. What lineage? We got three sons of Ham. Oh, Shem. Shem. That's why we get Shemite. We, we got to know that. So the Most High didn't make a covenant with the Hamites. The Most High didn't make a covenant with the Jesite. He made a covenant with Shem. With the father Abraham. That's the covenant that he's going to use. And we have to understand, why was Israel chosen? Israel was chosen to be a blessing to the nations. He said that Abraham in chapter 12, Abraham, you, by you, all nations shall be blessed. So Israel was to be a blessing to the nation. Israel is going to be the one that bring in 315, Genesis 315, the Messiah. Hallelujah. Huh? That's our job. We are the co to bring in the Messiah. We are the ones to introduce the world to the Shabbat. The peace, huh? The commandments we were. Hallelujah. We are the one. So, watch this here. So, y'all remember this verse? When Yeshua was talking to his Yahuda, his Talmudin, his student, he said, now you, now listen who he's talking to, Israel. The son of the king, he said, now listen, you are the light of the world. See, Israel was to be a light to the nations. But he said, listen, if you take your light and hide it, what good is it? He said, Israel, you ought to be soaked. We ought to be soaked to the world. He's talking to Israel. He's not talking to nobody else. But because we want to do our own things, okay, I'll find somebody else that's going to bring the fruit. I'm going to use other nations to make y'all jealous. That's what he's doing right now. Doing right now. So the patriot period is, when you hear the word patriot period, we're talking about Abraham. Come on, talk to me, Abraham. Who else? Who Abraham's son was? Isaac, Isaac and, Jacob. and Jacob. That's the patriarch period right there. So when we hear the biblical text say, these are our fathers, uh, 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 not the church fathers. We don't go with those. But the fathers, the biblical fathers. So every time the most high dressed the prophet or dress a man of God, he'll say, listen, I am the God of who? Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and Jacob. What he's saying, but I thought they did. They all, but I'm not. Huh? He said, listen, he said, I'm not. So he reminded him that, listen, I'm the one that stabbed that covenant with Abraham. And I told Abraham, I will bless your children. See, we, we have to understand, that's why God, the, listen, the most high charge is a generation God. Every time he speaks to our father, he said, Abraham, I will bless you and your seed. Ha ha! See, what we're doing is not for me, but my seed, and your seed, and your seed, and your seed, the generation to come. It's the generation God. Huh? We have to understand that. So if we only think that we're doing this for our sake, no, we lose it. we missing it. That's why we have to come together as a community. Understand that Israel is not Israel solo. It's a, it's a, it's a plural. It's, it's a nation. We are one nation under Torah. And we know who our God is. See, they just faking it. They in, in this country, they put they put on the money and God we trust. But that's false. The question would be, what God are you talking about? Because if 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 if, if, if it's in God we trust, then you would never vote for homosexual. Right. You would never have a daughter going around here. You would So what God are you talking about? Oh, I, okay, I know what God you're talking about. You're talking about the same God that they talk about at the AA, the God of my own understanding. Oh. Wow. I said it. So now, in the patriarch period, so the covenant is established with Abraham. This is very important. So when we get into Genesis, I'm going to show you how Genesis breaks it down for us. He has already declared the end from the beginning. 
And he's going to use Israel to be a blessing to the rest of the nation. But I'm going to show you a verse here. Go to Amos. Amos. I'm going to just go to the camera. Go dead. <laughs> Watch this here. Look what he says in Amos. Now, Amos is writing to Israel. Okay? Uh, Amos chapter 3. We'll, we'll read verses 1 and 2. I mean, 1 through 3. Now, this is what the Most High says. Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word. Oh, you got to talk louder than that. Hear this word that Jehovah has spoken against you, uh -huh. O children of Israel. So he's speaking this against us, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's speaking against us. Go ahead. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. So we know who he's talking about, right, y'all? Go ahead. Saying. You only have I know of all the families. Did y'all hear what the Most High said? The word no right there is yada. You of all the nations, you the only one I got an intimate relationship with. Huh? That's what he said. You only have I intimate of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will do what? Because why? Because you're my child. I will punish you. Is that what the verse said? Yes, it does. Because why? I can punish my own. Yes. That's why we get beat down by the Most High. And if, if he want to use the white man, the Chinese man, the Chinese man, he can use who will. Yes, he can. And when they take it too far, which they have, then he going to deal with them. I can give Charles permission to, to spank my son. But if my son come home with bruises on him, I know Charles went too far. Now Charles got to deal with me. So y'all have given certain people like, like Babylon, Assyria, uh, 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 the Greeks, and certain people to for his broad of discipline, but they took it too far. And guess what? They got to answer to daddy. And I'm going to leave that alone. They got to answer to daddy. That's how I'm going to do This is a fact. This is a fact. Yes. To prove my point, I'm going to show you. Go to, uh, just turn over. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Goodness. Yeah. I'm just trying to do something else. Go to, uh, uh, turn over to the book of Joel right quick. Let's go. Write this down. Ah. Read verses, uh, 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 Joel chapter 3. And I'm going to show you how the Most High is going to deal with this stuff here. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For, for what? Behold. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem. Do you hear that? He's going to bring us back. He's going to bring. We just got to recognize this thing and blow the trumpet. So he's going to bring us back. Go ahead. I will also gather all nations. Some nations. All nations. That include America? Yes. Go ahead. And will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Do you hear that? So that means the Most High has a people. And I can show you over and over in the text and say, Moses, go tell Pharaoh, do what? Let what? My people go. So who's your people? Israel. Hallelujah. The enemy in trouble. The enemy in trouble. Because this black man don't mind reading. Are oh, you hearing me? It's in the book. I'm going to read it. Go ahead. Whom they have scattered among the nations uh -huh. and parted my land. You see that? They have scattered. Go ahead. Verse 3. And they have cast lots from my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might. Drink. Look how they did us. Look, it's in the book. How they did us. So look, look how they did us. So y'all watching this hill. He's not blind. I'm saying to me, I know this for a fact. Our deliverer is in this book, returning back to his covenant, repenting. That's our deliverer. This is our antidote right here. It's not yeah. shouting in church. It's not none of that. Yahshua said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He has delivered us from the power of sin, but my mind got to be delivered. Oh, yeah. huh? I got to be delivered from up here. Amen. 
This world, listen, this world we get stuck at. So you ought to want me to tell you the truth. You might even get mad. If Charles was married or dating a girl, and, and, and I come to and he loves her, he's gonna marry her, right? And, 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 and I say, Charles, don't you know that the girl that you date, she's a call girl? Now, Charles ain't gonna wanna believe me at first. And then Charles might want to even fight me, but I told him the truth. Because why? Because I love him. Do you understand? And so what I'm saying that I'm going to be teaching the truth. You might not like it, but, huh, but I'm telling you because I love you. Because if the truth makes us free, then for me to know that this truth can set you free, but I'm afraid to tell Charles because he loved the woman. He loved her. He bought her a ring. But I, so I'm going to let him marry the prostitute. And talking about after the wedding, I started to tell you. But I, I didn't want to. No, you can't say you love her. So I can't say I love Israel if, 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 if I don't expose this. So notice what they did to it. But y'all knows this here, right? Now, let's see who took part in this here. Jump down to verse 6. Watch it. Oh, man, the children also of Yehuda and the children of Jerusalem have you sold into the Grecians. You know who the Grecians is? Here we go again. You can trace their descendant back to Japheth. Japheth. You look up, it'll be Adnan, Jabban. That's where the Greeks come from. I'm trying to tell you. Israel has caught hell from the Hamites and the Jephites. So, what, what say? I'm saying you got to know your enemy. So I gotta know, okay, we dealt with the Hamites in, in the beginning, now in the end we deal with the Jeff. Oh, y'all gotta understand it. But the Bible says, I'm gonna call all nations down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and plead for my people. Hallelujah. That's liberty right there. So, 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 go ahead because he gonna really give us some that warning. you might remove them far from their border. That was they, that's what they did, didn't it? So why? Because if I want to destroy a nation, I got to take them from their land. Because why? You you cannot rule a people when they're in their land. If you don't believe me, listen, listen. Let the, If I was in the game, let the Crips come on over here to our territory. Uh -uh. They don't know our land. Ain't no game going to come in your territory to fight you. Huh? No, it don't go down like that. It don't go down like that. So, so, so they know that if we want to destroy them as a nation, I got to remove them from the land. Huh? Why? Because we have a connection to the land. You see? So, remove them far from the land and give them cultures and, and, and abuse them and all these things. But the most high say, yeah, but I'm watching everything. Mm -hmm. I'm watching everything. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Seven. I will raise them out of the place. Who would do that? He said, I will raise them up. Yeah, I will. That's what he's doing there, George. He raised us up with this truth. Mm -hmm. Ain't no racism in my heart teaching truth. I'm being liberated by this here. Hallelujah. So the only people should get nervous if you're down with the oppressor. Whether you're black, white, Chinese, it doesn't matter. Right. You're Hamite, Jephite, mm -hmm. that's all you got to go. That, listen, there's nobody else. Unless you're an alien. Don't y'all see? I have declared the end from the beginning. So the Negroes that's causing me trouble, either they're Hamites or they're Shemites acting like Hamites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Don't know who they are. Yes. See, this is what the Most High trying to tell us. Know your enemy. Know your enemy. And I'm saying all oh, Hamites are enemy. You know that ain't biblical correct. Or all just I, you know that's not biblical correct. So don't let our culture flip your mind like that. Go ahead. Behold, I will raise them up out of the place where you have sold them, and I will return them. You, what, what, I will return your recompense upon what? Your own hands. See that payback. Did not the Bible say vision is mine? And what did it say? Vision is mine. So now if if, if if I got two sons, which I do, and if, if uh, Jace did something to Elijah, and vice versa, so if, if Jace come to me and tell me what Elijah did, then I discipline Elijah. But if Jace take it on his own term and do it, then I discipline his butt. So y'all said, now, you can go check vengeance out on, on him if you want to, but once you do that, you leave 
See why? Because the Most High know how to repay. Yes, he does. He said, "I'll leave him alone for generation, not touch his seed. Mm -hmm. I touch his seed, and wonder why cancer runs in his family." Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 10, he told our father Abraham, he who bless you, I will bless him. He will curse you, I will curse. You know the word curse? That ain't the original word for curse. That word is ara. It means joy. It means he who spit on you, I will spit on him. That's the most disgusting thing that you can do to a person. Y'all say the person who belittle you, talking about Israel, I will belittle them. People that speak against you, Israel, that say that you ain't nothing. Oh, it's coming back. Payday is coming. Yes, it is. So now, if there's a Hamite has done us a wrong, a Jesuit has done us wrong, you know how they can get out of trouble? By repentance. Mm. By repentance. That's how you get out of trouble. <sighs> uh oh. What verse A said? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. And I will sell your sons what? and your daughters and your daughters into the hand of the children of your See that? See that? Pay back. He said, now I'm gonna sell you. See how this thing is book around the thing? Listen, you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to get Israel to understand that we are in this nation, but this ain't our nation. But we respect the laws of the land, but we got a higher law. We don't need nobody to make a law for us to love our neighbor as ourselves. It's in the book. Right. We are taught in the book to love the stranger, don't vex a widow, or offer. We are, man, listen, we ain't got to form no, no leader. We got our stuff in the book. So stuff that the nations are doing now, we've been doing that for generations, generations. But we lost our identity in slavery. But this book going to get us back. Yeah. And it don't come easy. Got to pack it, y'all. I say, God, you got to give me a bold spirit. A bold spirit that they can hear your word. And not say it, not him. You go pastor again. I told my wife and I told him, I said, I'm going I'm to I'm repeat this stuff over and over. Because sometimes it takes you a 23rd. How many people that read the book say, how did I miss that? <laughs> how, how did I miss that? So we know that we all miss things. We watch the reruns of movies and then they show the bloopers and bloopers like, I didn't see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that proves to us that we miss things. Mm -hmm. So we got to go repetition over and over and over, right? right? So now we see that the patriarch period, right? Mm -hmm. So now when you think the patriarch period, I want you to think Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, and Joseph. That's what we deal with in, in Genesis. The covenant established with Abraham. The Most High made no covenant with no other nation in the world. Find it if it's there. Find it. It's not there. It's not there. So when they say in the when our Christian brothers say that we are under new covenant, ain't no new covenant with the Christians. It's with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. They don't know that, but it's in the book. Behold, the day come, says Jehovah, that I will make a, a, a new covenant with who? With the house of Israel and the house of Judah. You show me, my Christian brothers, want to arrogate yourself and put Israel down? Huh? Show me where well, the covenant made with any other people in the planet. The covenant is made with Israel. Now, you have to deal with when the real Israel stand up. You got to deal with it. So we see the pressure up here, right? So we talked about that. It's very important. So as we get into that, it's going to, the lessons of that. The lessons of that. So now the second period is called the theocracy period. That goes from Exodus to the book of Ruth. Now, theocracy literally means uh, a nation ruled by God. Okay? Theocracy, a nation ruled by God. That's what it means. We didn't begin to be ruled by man until 1 Samuel that we wanted to be like the nation. Sam. Yeah, yeah, I'm spelling it for you. Thank you. Uh, uh, T-H-E-O. That's Theo right there. That's the Greek word, 2316. So that means God. Uh, so T-H-E-O C-R-A-T-I-C. -C. And so that's when we was ruled by the Most High. 
We had a good time when the Most High was ruling. That's from Exodus to the book of Ruth. So that's when we became a nation in Mount Sinai. If you hearken to my voice, he said, huh? I will, and I'll make you a peculiar people above all nations. All nations. Israel is that nation. But we ought to be a light unto the Gentiles. And here's the rest of the nation. Number three of our great periods is called the monarchy period. This is when we was ruled by kings, like King Saul, King David, and, 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 and uh, 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 Solomon. Now, I do want to give you some dates uh, to, to go with this here, okay? With the, uh, with, a, with the period of the monarchy being ruled by men, okay? Uh, I want to give you some dates. Under King David, that all Israel was a nation. Under King Saul, we was coming together. But under King David, we was all a nation. All 12 tribes were joined together. But when Solomon, in 1 King chapter 11, when Solomon sinned with the many wives, the Most High came to him twice, but he wouldn't listen. And so the Most High divided the kingdom. So the kingdom was divided in 931, okay? Which became the southern kingdom, the northern kingdom, and the southern kingdom. Very important in our history. Got to know our history. Got to know our history. The book will come alive. Got to know our history. But then the Most High raised up prophets to go to the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom to warn them to stop their Baal worship and Asherah worship and keep the Shabbat in feet, but they wouldn't listen. So in 722, the northern kingdom went into captivity with the Assyrians. Okay, and Assyria came from Jacob. Then in 605, you would think that Judah would listen, but Judah didn't. So in 605, Judah was captured by Babylon. And then in 586, Babylon destroyed the temple. And then in 536, we have the return. This is where we get uh, uh, the book Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther. This is the return. So under Ezra and Nehemiah, after the 70 uh, years of captivity was over, Daniel chapter, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Jeremiah chapter 25, I think verse 11, well, uh, who said that it was going to be into Judah was going to be in captivity for 70 years because of breaking the covenant. That's uh, Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 11. So in 536, we returned back to the land, but not everybody. A little of the northern king of some, but it was really a, a, a Benjamin, a Judah, Benjamin, and some <laughs> Levites, and some of the Israelites, the little group, okay? Uh, and not many would took up to this uh, 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 this opportunity that uh, King Cyrus made a proclamation. But you would think everybody would go back, but they did. They did. So only I'm looking at maybe about 50, 60,000, 50 some thousand went back. Wow. Yeah. As you look at, I mean, it gives us a number. So not many people went back because just imagine after 70 years being in captivity. You establish business and all this kind of stuff, and things ain't bad as you thought they were. That's how it was, and that's how it is now. You know, I got a nice house, I got a nice car. You know, it ain't that bad. So that's the danger of prosperity. It, it, it causes you to lose your fight. Okay, so I want you to get that. So uh, now I talk about that later. So I, I go back. So now the. The fourth period that we want to deal with is the exile period, which we just talked about. This when both nations was departed. So this exile period uh, from 605 to 536 is the one I gave you. This is known as the captivity or the exile, which I told you, uh, for 70 years into uh, the Babylonian captivity. Now keep in mind that the northern kingdom was scattered to Assyria, but never came back. They never came back to the land. So they scattered everywhere. 
So that's why the Most High is going to raise up fishers to go out and fish for Israel. So that's why you can, uh, uh, the statement that uh, that the Mushak made, excuse me, in Matthew 15, 24, where he said that I was not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he came seeking the the, uh, uh, the naughty kingdom. So now, when we deal, guys, when we deal with the exile or the captivity, this is very important. When we deal with the captivity of Judah, we have no no books on the on the Northern Kingdom captivity, but Judah we do. So the writer, which is the Ruach, wants to know that if you want to understand where Judah was in Babylon. So these are the books that you need to read to understand the Babylonian captivity. That is Ezekiel, Daniel, okay? Ezekiel and Daniel. Those are the books that you need to read. Also, you can even, also, yeah, 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 yeah. Also, you can even throw in Jeremiah and Lamentation. And now, when you read Lamentation, it is, it, Jeremiah is the one that wrote the book of Lamentation. And you can hear, you can hear the cry of Jeremiah in the book, uh, grieving over, 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 uh, over the city being destroyed. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Let's turn to, uh. Lamentation for a moment. Now, just picture this here: that the that the kingdom has went into captivity, the city is burned, the people has went into slavery by the Babylon. They came and destroyed everything. They showed no mercy to the old man, young man, crippled. They didn't care. So Jeremiah, when you look at the book of Lamentation, listen how he described this here: Jeremiah, I mean Lamentation, chapter one. Listen what he says. Just think about what I just said. Oh, how does the city sit in solitary, was full of people? How does she become as a widow? So that no, so that was great among the nation and princes among the provident. How does she become a destitute? She weeps so in the night, and her tears are, uh, are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. All her friends have, uh, have dealt treacherous with her. They have become her enemy. Judah is going into captivity because of, of the affliction, because of the great servitude. She dwell among the heathen. She find no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the streets. And so that's what the book of Jeremiah, I mean, Lamentation, is, is coming from a portion perspective. That he's grieving over the sea. So when you read the book of, of Lamentation, just keep that in mind that the city has been destroyed. Uh, now, the last one is the restoration. So these are the five great periods of Israel history. The restoration. The restoration began with uh with Ezra through Esther. So that when we look at those books, uh, uh Ezra, uh Esther, Ezra, and Nehemiah were thinking of the captivity, coming out of captivity, the 70 years of captivity, and going back into the land. And as we look at those books in, in our class in the future, you will see that it wasn't easy for them. It wasn't easy for them going back. That's why many people didn't go back, because when they left the city seven years ago, it was destroyed. It takes work. It takes a love for the city. A love for your own land. Why do you think they 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 made uh let's say that they act like that Africa or or or, 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 or really you can call Israel the uh the upper part of Africa. It's the two part like the upper and the lower. So so when you look at the ancient map, Israel or uh, Israel is the land of Canaan. The Canaanites lived there first. It, it's, 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 it's Africa. It's connected. It's connected. It's all the same land. Okay? So now, you can understand why they will make the continent of Africa look like I ain't going back there. The stuff that they show us in the West. You know what I'm saying? Show us so poor stuff that we all are guilty for saying, man, I ain't no Africa. Man, I ain't going back there. They made us hate where we came from. 
not want to go to it. It's a beautiful, but they move in there. There are in droves. Matter of fact, ain't the uh, 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 the queen, the king, and the queen or the uh, Prince Charles is the prince, the one who uh, just got married? Uh-huh. And they move in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Now, I'm, I'm just telling you, it, it, all this stuff that most high do what you do, expose that. Because I'm gonna show you, and we're gonna close. Uh, go to uh, uh, Luke. Luke. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, listen. You ain't gotta make up nothing. Just, just, just teach the book. That's all it is. And those who want to know the truth will know the truth will make you free. And Luke eight seventeen. This is what he says here. This is the the Mushiach, Yeshua Hamashiach talking. This why I ain't gotta worry about nothing, child. Luke 8, 17. Read it out loud for me. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Mm. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Did y'all hear that? This is what Yeshua said. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that shall not be made known. So all this is going to come out. The truth will come out. So the Most High is raising up leaders, teachers. Open my eyes to teach. I, I, I want to be, just like the psalmist said, you know, the interest of that word, give me understanding. I want to be able to teach sound doctrine because I believe what the Mushak say, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So we're not stuck on salvation. But I'm saying, is your mind liberated? Because you're a believer in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, but you still bondage to Christmas. You still bondage to self worship. But you don't know it that you're bondage because why? You don't know the truth yet. That's right. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right there because I, I can go on, but I just want to lay down. Once again, let's do a. A recap over these five great uh, periods of Israel history. Number one was the Patriarch period. I did that from Genesis chapter 12 to uh, chapter 50. And then we did the Theocracy period. That between where the kingdom where we were ruled by Yah. That's Exodus to Root. And then we did the Monarchy period. We start with 1 Samuel. I didn't give you that, but I'm giving it to you now. To Jay. 1 Samuel to 2 Chronicle. That was the Monarchy period right there, okay? And then number four was the exile period, which we, we focused on from 605 to 536. That's called the Babylonian captivity. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 11 talks about that, 70 years of captivity. And then the last one, we talked about the restoration period uh, through Ezra to Esther. Uh, 536 to 420. A lot of great information that we're going to begin to study as we go through. So when I give, like the homework I had shouted out was to read Genesis chapter 10, right? And so, and then if I was y'all, I look up, take the time out to, to find out as many as you can. So you say the sons of Japheth, or Gomer, you know what I'm saying? Gomer and Mega. So the, look at the names of them and see can you trace who they are now today. So I can show you, Matt, uh, 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 I can show you. Uh, 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 Maga and Masha, that's Russia. That's Russia. And, 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 and I'm going to show you this verse here to show you for people that don't think it's important. I'm, I'm going to show you for a second. Then I'm going to close. Genesis, Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10, right quick. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Genesis chapter 10, read verse 2 for me, Ms. J. Genesis chapter 10, Genesis verse 10. 10 2. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madi, and Wanfa, and Tubal, and Malish, and Tyrus. Okay, now, you see it? Where it say, and the sons of Japheth, mm-hmm. Gomer, and who else? Magog, and Madi, and Javon. Okay, okay, hold it right there. So, now, I can prove to you that's Russia, okay? That's Russia. Now watch this here. Go to the book of Revelation. And you tell me that the Most High didn't declare the end from the beginning. Go to Revelation chapter 20. 
And I just want you to read verse 7 and 8. Russia, Moscow, it, it's there. I can show you on my map out there. Revelation. This is a history book. This is a history book. What's it? Seven and eight. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Uh huh. And shall go out to deceive the nation, uh -huh. which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog. Uh -huh. The same people we saw it in the beginning. Gog and Magog. So he already told you who they are in the beginning, but we never looked it up. Go ahead. To gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Yeah. This is what we're talking about. Now, that's going to be a war coming that's going to just make all wars ever created. I'm talking about, I'm talking about over 200 million soldiers. Oh, yeah. China going to be involved. Russia going to be involved. Guess China come from JPEG. It's all there on my calendar right there. The change the name down. What I'm saying again, the most high has declared to us in the beginning. So when I say, man, why Russia doing that? Like, man, that JPEG. So, uh, so what we're going to do through the biblical text and CNN, them all they're going to do is confirm what the Bible has already said generations before there was the ever a CNN. So now we'll know that who's moving around to expect who's going to attack us in the end. Because why? He's already declared to us. So now you see why if I'm the enemy and I know that my demise has already been exposed or charged, my hand has been revealed in the beginning, man, I'm, I'm going to start a doctrine that don't read that. Old Testament done away with. Oh, right. don't read that. Just stay the New Testament. Don't just why? Because why? My demise is in the beginning. Father, we bless you. We thank you once again for your word. Father, I believe in what Yahuwah, Yeshua Hamashir said. There's not one thing that a secret would not be revealed. There's no secret that won't be revealed. So we bless you and we praise you. Good time, huh? Good time. And so we bless you and praise you for who you are. In the mighty name of Yeshua, bless your people today. Bless your people. Be with Sister Rose and them as we travel tomorrow. Be with them. Allow your spirit to hover over that place. We bless you and thank you. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. It's about the end, too. Just in time.